Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, now, quite a few of you guys have said to me, yeah, how come you never covered that Post Malone doing uh, Nirvana covers thing? Um, and the simple answer is I just haven't had time. But today I do have time, so we're going to be talking about Post Malone covering Nirvana. Um, the song I'm going to look at specifically is one of my favourite Nirvana songs called Heart Shaped Box. Um, Post Malone recorded this uh, in 2020 um, during a live stream where he performed some other Nirvana covers as well. And by all accounts, it's a well-received um, and well-thought-of performance. So I'm going to have a little look at it and tell you what I think. Justin Hawkins rides again Again F-E-C-S-F says, uh, we need this guy making rock music immediately. Um, Amiga 60, Amigo 64 says, he's totally got the voice for this. He should really try to bring rock back into the mainstream. And Benjamin Dudley says, not a Post Malone fan, but if he put out music like this, I would be. So obviously this is a departure for him because uh, Post Malone is an American rapper, singer, songwriter and record producer. He gained acclaim for blending genres and subgenres of hip hop, pop, R and B, and trap. Trap, I think, of those four subgenres would be my least favourite. I'm not sure if I'm into that um, hi hat that goes. <coughs> it sounds like a mistake somehow. Anyway, his stage name was derived from inputting his birth name into a rap name generator. His real name is Austin Richard Post. <clears throat> okay, so. If I had to guess how this rap name works, you take your surname and you make it your first name and then you um, <clears throat> take the surname of one of your favourite characters from a Paul Williams musical. So he's obviously gone for Bugsy Malone, so he's gone Post Malone. Um, I think what I would do is I would, I would be Hawkins Winslow Leach. Haw Hawkins Leach, yeah. Hawkins Leach um, from the musical Phantom of the Paradise. Hawkins Leach. My name's Hawkins Leach. I like to do... Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> My name's Hawkins Leach. I grew up near a beach in Lowestoft. Um, and I'm spoken soft. I've switched them around, soft spoken. So... That is the kind of genius you can expect when my rap album drops. Um, he is among the best-selling music artists with over 80 million records sold. And I don't think he's that old, actually. I think he might be just one year younger than me, 27. He has always had a love for alternative rock music. According to Malone, um, his first foray into professional music began when he was in a heavy metal band. He says soon afterwards he transitioned to softer rock as well as hip-hop. Now that's a good combination, sort of, some sort of Richard Marks level soft rock with rapping going on over the top. It'd be brilliant. Malone himself has called his music genre-less. In between genres. Um, Genre-fluid? That's what mine is. All right, let's have a look at this thing. I love Nirvana, as all of you know, so this will be fun. Go on, Post! He's tuning up. I love that. He's just doing it. He's old school, you know, humble. Not like me. I, I have a butler bring my guitar to me. Wait, he tuned up and then he detuned. He engaged the tuner, tuned up, but then disengaged the tuner so that you can hear the guitar and then carried on doing some more tuning adjustments. That's ballsy. I respect this guy already. Come on, Posty. Give it to me. Uh, this song is called Heart Shaped Box. Yeah, my favourite Nirvana song. Fucking brilliant. Let's do it. Wait a minute. Is that Travis, the, 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 the edging man? Is that him with the bean hat? That is a thing. She has me like a Pisces when I am weak. Oh, my God. His voice is perfect for this, isn't it? I mean, it feels a little bit slow. I'll say that. He's pretty chilled. He may have had a glass of rosé and perhaps one of those uh, Mary Jane's laughing tobacco cigarettes. Who knows? But uh, the, the pace of it's a little bit under what I was expecting. But his voice is great. It's really got that sort of, I don't know, an effortless rasp to it in this sort of quiet section. I've been trapped inside your heart shape. Oh my God, he's actually nearly pulling the trigger even at this point. Um, he elected to stay on that. He, he, da, da, da. 
he's normally the melody goes da, 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 and he missed out that step there it could have been for actually you know musical reasons actually it still works I've been drawn into your when he does this i think i think what he's actually doing is saying can i get my vocal to be a bit louder uh, it's going to get loud in a minute i think I like that little bit of extra vibrato. It's quite a saturated uh, vocal channel going on there. But you can hear that he's got proper gargle and rasp in his in his vocal. A bit of some shit in there that he needs to, to roar out. Which will probably happen on this first chorus. Oh my god, it's awesome. If you pause it at 1 minute 14, you, you can see the configuration of Travis's drum set there. There isn't a symbol behind his head, but I'm just going to show you what you sh why you need that there. Hang on. Oh, it's awesome. This is perfect. He's the, he's, the right man, he's the right man to sing that, I think. There used to be a rumour that um, Kurt Cobain developed that sort of trademark fully shredded um, vocal timbre by by screaming into a pillow on his bed which I think would probably be like um, you know as a teenager just screaming into a pillow which I think shows a level of commitment that <laughs> more or less unprecedented to, to actually destroy your voice in that way because you wanted to have the rasp. It's amazing. Um, but he's got it. I don't know what he's been doing. Maybe maybe he's like... Um, maybe it's part of that sort of screaming therapy thing that some people do. You know, that primal... I do it sometimes, you know. But... Uh, let's not talk about that now. He's, he's really into it. The um, guitarist with the blue hat. And he's he's dressed up for the occasion, got his plaid shirt on. Well observed. <laughs> he's not a bad guitar player, is he? I mean, look at his... Some people hold a guitar and it just looks a bit awkward. That's not, that's not the case of this bloke. Post Malone's a rocker. This is obvious. There's nothing wrong with his hand positionings. He's got his thumb. You can get his thumb over as well for some uh, Hendrixy stuff if he wants to. I bet. Yes, a little courtesy tune up on the second verse. Good work. That's a brilliant uh, way of adding a bit of emotion to it because his voice is. Um, you can already hear the shred in it in the in that early in these sort of opening quieter exchanges so to purr, 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 put that um really fast vibrato on it um adds a, a piece of fragility that's very welcome to the ear balls and apart from anything else he's a les paul guy i mean come on it's a les paul standard sunburst Keeping it simple. Think about it, Travis. Think about it. Get the symbol behind your head. I mean, obviously, you'll go deaf after a couple of strikes, but it's going to look amazing. Trust me. All the positive stuff that people are saying about this performance is true. It's fucking brilliant. There's nothing wrong with it. It's really great. And I'm looking forward to the guitar solo. Who do you think is going to play it? Will it be Blue Hat Man with the plaid shirt or will it be Post Malone himself? I'm hoping it's Post Malone because I think it's going to... Just looking at his fingers and the way his hands move, I reckon he's up to it. Let's see. Yes! He's really got the sound spot on as well, but he's got the, he's got the sound... He's got the guitar sound from Nevermind, I think, like which is the Butch Vig produced Nirvana record. But he's doing a song from the um, 
Steve Albini record um, in utero, or is it? Is that what it is? Yeah. But that guitar sound is, I've, I've forgotten what the pedal is that they use, or it's a simulator of something that was actually from the 80s. Some weird sort of pitch shifter that widens the sound and gives it a sort of a chorusy thing. Um, I've used it on the most recent Darkness record as well. It's a brilliant way to sound like you're from the 80s. But, you know, he's using it to sound like it's from the 90s and it's working. Yeah! That's he's doing the same thing I do. So on the um, Les Paul there, um, you have free settings on a toggle switch um, with a sta- you know factory standard issue one. Top one says rhythm, bottom one says treble, and then the middle one is supposed to be a combination of the two. But if you have it in the middle one and then you turn down the, the volume that's going to the neck pickup, <clears throat> it'll actually be muted. So you can do <laughs> like he's doing there by just sort of pushing it down into the treble position, which is basically the lead position. That's that's the that's the pickup that's right next to the bridge down that end. Um and uh, that's that's obviously the loudest kind of rock trebly sound there. So um <clears throat> it's a really good uh, technique to do a bit of that sort of like a Les Paul's version of uh, Rage Against the Machine trickery. But one of the great features of the Les Paul is the way that that toggle switch is configured because you can do stuff like that. And he's doing it. But the thing is, to do that and to understand how Les Paul works to that degree, I think you have to have actually held a Les Paul in your hand and played it for quite a bit of time, really. So he's, I don't think this is an inexperienced guitar player in, in, in the least. Maybe it's like, um, maybe he should have like a snare and a crash there, like an additional snare, same as this one here. So... So that strike with the when it's the the snare and the and the crash. Think about it. That's a good drum feel. Ah, uh, all right. Well, you know what? That's just brilliant. That really is great. So, <clears throat> for future reference, when somebody says to you, "Have you seen that uh, Post Maloney uh, doing Nirvana covers?" You you can s- safely say with confidence, "Yes, it was brilliant." Um, because or just watch it, and then you'll probably still say that. I'm going to watch the rest of it because it is really great. That's a great performance. Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Watch one of these two videos and never, ever, ever hesitate to recommend more stuff like this because I really enjoyed it. Thanks, guys.